What's going on folks? Hope you're having a wonderful night or day. Welcome back to some Mountain Blade Bannerlord. It's been two years in the making that I've been preparing for this moment. Now, when this game first released, there was a lot of people that had campaigns that were like snowballing out of control. Let's say you started as Sturgia or you started as the Northern Empire. You might notice that your faction would gain control very quickly and just dominate the entire map. Or you might see just one single enemy faction dominate and that was that. For me though, it's been a little bit of a different story. For the past two years, I've actually been running one single campaign. I've been playing it very on and off. I play about 40 to 50 hours a week during this campaign. And what I tend to call this one is the never ending Batanian War. Now the original ruler is still in command, Kaladog. We're at war with the Kuzite and don't really worry about the Sturgia thing all that much. They barely have anything at this point in time, but we are still at war with the Southern Empire. They still are in power, and of course Kuzite is definitely in power. They're the most powerful at the moment. This has basically been a chess match, a never-ending chess match. So as you can see, the majority of the southwestern side of this map, or depending on how you rotate it, I guess, whatever, is completely controlled by us, the Batanian. I'm just a vassal right now. I'm not actually a king and never was a king of the Batanian, although maybe one day I might be. This character is about 2,322 days in. He is my original character that I started on launch day. And just to explain how determined I was to continue playing this campaign, there were some issues that happened back when the game first released, where save game files were getting corrupted and it took a couple versions for them to actually get that working again properly to where you could load your game. Because in the early versions, I don't know what happened, but once you got to a certain threshold, your game would just start corrupting and you wouldn't be able to load it past that point. So you had to start a new game, otherwise you couldn't play for a little while. But I just waited and kept importing my game into the folder. And then eventually I was able to get it working again. So this has been my original save file all this time. And all the money, all the resources, anything that you see amassed in this campaign was all done legitly. I've always been on the realistic difficulty. I haven't changed that at all. So if I go into the options right now and go into the campaign options, it'll show you exactly what I set the very first day. Normally on Mountain Blade, the original version and in Warband, I was always playing on the lesser difficulties. But this time around in Bannerlord, I wanted to try playing it at the realistic difficulty. So that's exactly what I did. So realistic recruitment difficulty, friendly troops receive damage, player receive damage, meaning that even though my character is geared to the teeth, he can still take a headshot and go down in 0.0 seconds. Or I take a wrong swing by a dude with the mace and I'm basically dead as toast. Now I do have birth and death enabled still. I don't have Iron Man mode enabled though. My character is basically reaching the end of his life and I will be honest, I have saved scum quite a bit on this campaign. Mostly the only time I do it is when my characters that I really like, my companions die in battle for some stupid reason. Like if I'm fighting an army that's 100 units less than mine and it's a clear victory, but one of my companions takes an arrow to the head and they just randomly die instead of getting wounded. Yeah, I might save scum on that one and reload the game really quick. But in terms of money, resources, everything like that, I actually didn't cheat or anything on this campaign. The money here that you see might actually seem very unrealistic, but back when the game came out, there was a period in time where workshops were giving a crap ton of money. I was able to get myself up to 1 million gold pretty fast in the first month or so. I'm pretty sure each of my workshops were giving like 10, 20K gold income per week. So I capped out on those and just let them build up and that's pretty much what happened there. And then as far as equipment, I just went around buying them from the best shops. I always looted the best equipment pieces that I could get off enemies and I always kept them in my bag as a stashed item. Big arsenal here. I actually do own three territories. Well, I used to own three territories, but I'll get into that in a second. But I have a crap ton of stuff in my inventory that I can use as backup equipment if I want to. And then for my character himself, he specializes in one-handed sword and shield and bow. That's what I normally always played back in Warband. Sometimes I would go two-handed weapon, but I normally always did use a bow over a crossbow. I just kind of prefer it more. But these are my character stats as you can see here. On the right side though, you can see he's pretty old. So if you want to know just how old, let me go ahead and show you that. And this is also another thing I wanted to show you. He's got a lot of renown. I actually didn't know that we were almost about to hit tier six on our clan tier. That's actually pretty cool. But he's got a lot of renown in this playthrough. I went through doing a bunch of different tournaments. That's also another way that I started out earning a lot of money. And he's got a lot of children, as you can see here. Companion wise, I've got 
all eight slots filled up and every one of these guys is super important to me and geared to the teeth so that's another reason why i would save scum unless they die of old age or something like that that's pretty normal when my character dies of old age his son is going to take over and let me go ahead and introduce you to them now so I've got a lot of relations going on with this character. He's actually 58 right now. I'm pretty sure a couple months ago, he was actually in a period where he was going to be dying of old age, but then I had to reload my game for some other reason. And then he wasn't dying of old age anymore. So I think he's probably on his last leg. But once that happens, I'm pretty sure his son's gonna take over. And over time, I've made a lot of enemies on this character. Unfortunately, sometimes that's just what you have to do. But this is his family. So, of course, we got the brother. I'm pretty sure everybody gets the brother by default. Whenever you start the game, you just automatically get a sibling alongside you. And then he's got, of course, a wife. Actually, I don't think he's seen her in about 500 endgame days, so I'm kind of neglecting both of them when it comes to that part. But they have about seven or eight children together. So she's resting at Ox Hall, I believe, and this is my first one, Jezebel. She's actually inside the army with me, and I took her with me to train her up, have her help me fight. So that way she'll be a little bit beefed up by that point. She'll be able to support her brother, who is probably going to be the main heir because he's my only son and that's Attila Snow. So Attila Snow is also in the army too. It felt like it took forever for this guy to reach 18 years old. I remember when he was really young and I was waiting for him to grow up and I was so nervous that my main character was gonna die before he ever reached the age to where I could name him my heir, but he did. So that's pretty cool. He's in my army too. And of course, there's multiple other daughters here that I have. Actually, for a little bit there, I wasn't sure if he was going to have a son because all he was having was daughters, but we got that sorted out, so that should be fine. But let's go ahead and talk about the fiefs. So right now I have Ox Hall. This is my main settlement. The castle here was the first fife that I was ever gifted by the King of Batania. And I did have two other ones. So I had Provend and I also had Galland. Now there's been a lot of changes, of course, to Mountain Blade over the course of its history. One of them was the keep battles, which I did really enjoy when those are finally implemented. That was really fun to be able to participate in. And those take place when you're in the middle of siege, but also rebellions, because I had these fifes for the majority of the campaign. But as soon as that rebellion mechanic kicked in, all of a sudden, after a little while, even though the prosperity and everything was all dandy and nice with this one in particular because Galland was mine too uh they rebelled this one up here Provin, that also did rebel before that and then what's their faces took it over vlandia so i just really haven't had the chance to take it back because we're not at war with them right now but Galen, since they're under rebel occupation, I do have full rights to take that back. And I got them outnumbered, you know, two to one. So I think we'll have an easy fight here. We're going to do that in a little bit here. But I just wanted to show you a little bit about this campaign and talk about what changes that Bannerlord has had over the past two years. There's been a lot of really nice quality of life changes, a lot of skill changes, too. I remember many times when I would load up my skill page and there would always be resets happening because they would have to reset the perks whenever they changed up the way that they would work. So I remember the bow ones being one of the most popular ones to get changed. In fact, I had to switch this stuff up a lot. But let's go ahead and jump into the party composition. So once upon a time, back when the game first came out, I was dead set on using only Batanian units in my army. However, somewhere along the way, we encountered this thing called cavalry. Now, when you're dealing with like maybe 20 total cavalry troops, they're really not that hard to take care of, right? But when you're dealing with entire armies, Kuzite to be exact, of cavalry units or majority cavalry units, that's when it kind of becomes a problem and you need to adapt. So around the time that we actually got into this never ending Batanian war, and just to further clarify, what I mean by this is that whenever we take land from the Kuzite or the Southern Empire, they will bring massive armies and take it right back. So it's kind of like a never ending chess match where they take some, we take some, and normally they take some while we're recovering, or we might meet them head on and we might win a couple battles. Or what also normally happens, and this is part of what has prevented the snowball, is that Kuzite and Southern Empire will declare on us at the same time. And if we take something of Kuzite, Southern Empire will come in on the other route and take something of ours. And then sometimes Southern Empire will declare on Kuzite, really love that part. And then sometimes Sometimes there will be peace, but realistically, we've never been able to fully eradicate either faction ever since this started. 
So I have my brother, he's at the top here. I have a special unit of people that I want following me at all times in the middle of battle. So these are the heavy infantry, my number six key. So it's made up of my brother, Prendor the Red, who's one of my fighters, Attila Snow, my son. We've got Frostbeard, he's actually in my archer squad. He leads the archers along with the Huntress. Jezebel is also another one of my archers here too. And my engineer, he actually focuses on engineering like for siege engines, but I just keep him in the archer squad so he's a little bit safer. And then further down, these guys lead my infantry. Technically, they lead my infantry. But I have the shield maiden right here and this man of the brotherhood. And I kind of separate them like this because it helps me sort through my units. I put my cavalry up above these guys right here so it's easier to know where I need to move them. And then my archers, I always put them at the very top. And then followed by my elite infantry. These are units that are above level 21 or around level 21. And then below these two is where I have my trainee soldiers near the bottom. So anybody below level 21 and the very last slot is reserved for my healer. And I have a lot of prisoners in here that I normally keep around because from time to time it makes it a little bit easier for recruitment. I don't have to go anywhere. They're just already in the party and they'll want to join from time to time. So that helps me out quite a bit. I also love getting these foresters specifically because these are some of my favorite archers to use. In fact, they kind of remind me of Batanian master archers, but I kind of like them more because they wear wolfskin hats and bearskin. But moving on, let's go ahead and finish this off with the siege i'm going to go ahead and take back this land so right now this is kind of the rest period we're still at war with the kuzite and i'm going to be heading back up there with an army or i'm going to form an army around there to try to take something you know maybe this area right here move up there and see what we're working with before the southern empire declare on us again but i'm going to take back this territory so that i can reclaim this fife and hopefully not have to deal with these guys for a little while now, I've got this siege going on right now. I've kind of waited a little bit because I wanted to starve out the settlement's garrison. They started out with about 600 troops, and I actually didn't have but around 623. So I waited for a couple more people to get here. And now that we've starved them out a little bit, I think we're ready to go. Now, I do have multiple machines here in reserve. Two Ongars, two Trebuchets, a Battering Ram, and two Towers if I need them. Let's go ahead and lead the assault. Let's jump right in there. Okay, so we're in the deployment phase. I'm gonna go ahead and take this nice and easy. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this treb to being back here, on guard in front. Perfect. I'm gonna take off this siege tower. I'm gonna put it here instead. I'm gonna keep this one open because I wanna rush my troops onto the left side and we're gonna gather up on that side and all assault at once. So whoever's not on the ram, which, wait, which unit was supposed to be on the, okay, number six. So one and three are going to be with me. Ooh, that was almost close. That was really close, almost. That would have sucked. Okay. So like I said, I specialize in one-handed and bow, and my character is pretty geared to the teeth but we're on realistic difficulty so we still have to be super careful no matter what so i'm gonna go ahead and tell my guys to start forming up here let's go let's go i can go ahead and start charging and I'm going to start pelting some of these guys off here. Oh, he's so close. He was so close. I think that guy almost hit me with the rock. <laughs> oh, too close. Not close enough. I am usually better than that. All right, come on. They've kind of retreated off the walls, it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and start moving up. And then I'm going to take all my cab units that are right in this area. Not necessarily cab units because they kind of mix and match when it comes to the troop deployment and sieges. And we're all going to form up on this wall. And we'll go in all at once is what we're going to do. There's a lot of them right here. I'm at full health, but I like to be very careful in these scenarios.
Okay. Need to push one direction. There we go. Oh. Where did these guys come from? Okay. All right. We're we're doing good. We're doing good. Keep pushing, guys. Keep pushing. Keep pushing. What am I walking? Oh, this. Okay. Yeah, unfortunately for you, buddy, I was right here. Come on, come on. I love how in Mountain Blade... Um, a lot of the sieges end up being like this, whether you're on attack or defense. It's overhead strikes, overhead strikes followed by overhead strikes. Okay, we're going to have to make another plan here. I don't know how we're doing this. Screw it. Because I don't know if their reinforcement wave is coming from this direction or what's going on here, but there's a lot of dudes right here. And there was a Quite a bit in the last wave of people that came this way. So I'm trying to keep watch on that count. As long as none of my companions die, that's all I care about. It looks like none of them died. Normally they get knocked out, so that's fine with me. Okay, let's push forward. Also, hold on. It's kind of dark on my monitor. I need to turn up the brightness and contrast here. One moment, guys. Hold me down. Hold me down. Perfect. Much better. I can actually see indoors. Okay, let's see what we're working with here and where these guys are coming from. Okay, they must be coming from downstairs. Let's go. Start working our way here. Oh, don't want to fall off that. Oh, yeah, I see you. Nice. We got a really big unit here. Ooh, somebody... <laughs> <laughs> Somebody got a big siege engine kill. Very nice. Let's push out. Hmm. I was hoping I'd get that shot. Or that one. Alright, man, let's go. Looks like they might be coming from that direction. Oh, okay. Here we go. Here's where they're coming from. Let's play. Get that guy for sure. I don't like it when they have maces. That's bad news for me. Or crossbows. Go, go, go. Charging them in. Charging them in. No, no, no. Come here. Come here. Come here. If this is where their reinforcements are coming from, that's good. We'll keep mopping them up on this side. That way our battering ram is going to have a much easier time pushing through. Our battering ram squad should be... Should be going in and we can surround them from all sides. Ooh, if I got hit by that, that would have been bad. We're pushing towards the battering ram squad.
Also known as the front gate. There they are. Nice, very nice, very nice. Okay, we, we can definitely open the gates from this side. That's something that I also like to do is I like to rush the main gate from the other side and then try to open it. It's only worked a couple times, to be honest. Like, there was a really hard siege that I had to do where we were almost outnumbered and we actually won because I was able to get the door open and all my units just came pouring through. So, hopefully, on this occasion, because it looks like they're smacking down the door, can I see them out here? I can't see them from here. Ooh, that's a lot of archers. Okay. Ooh. Is it open? It's open. Yes, that's what I'm talking about. Okay. That's what we want right there. That's what we wanted. Everybody charge. Everybody charging. Both sides, just absolute mayhem. Now, as far as the AI goes, yeah, it, you know, it can still be pretty dumb at times, but there have been improvements, believe it or not. There have definitely been improvements there. And overall, like the combat AI, like when you're in the middle of an arena match or tournaments, for example, they're actually pretty, pretty smart. Like the... Differences in AI, and I covered this in a video just before Bannerlord came out, but the differences in AI when it comes to Bannerlord as opposed to like Warband or the original, they've made a lot of improvements on that side of things. They're a lot smarter, more complex, so their attack patterns are much different, more unique. And um, yeah, you'll notice a lot of key differences when you go toe to toe with enemies in Bannerlord, especially when they're on the highest combat difficulty. Sweet. So we actually finished the battle, something I wasn't actually sure if we'd be able to do with me being at full health or almost full health, but we killed a lot of them. They only killed 353 people of us on our side. I lost 12 men. I'll take that. That's a really good score. Oh yeah, they retreated to the keep. Perfect. So that means I get to showcase a keep battle. Now this was added. This is new, actually, but the keep battle itself was added um, a little while ago, probably a couple of months. But this, on the other hand, allows me to choose who's coming in with me, it looks like. I like that. And I, I like that quite a bit, actually. So I'm going to choose probably anybody that's an actual character. So it looks like that person can come in with me. I'll take that. And then what else we got? So I can't choose any of my real companions, which is very interesting. I wonder why that is. Let's go ahead and pick, let's see, well, let's, I'll take the Fion champions because those are my, yeah, I want those. But I'm gonna go ahead and try to take infantry, like actual infantry. I'll take like three more of these guys. So um, this is gonna be a close quarters fight. So I'll probably want some heavies like these dudes. This will probably help me a ton. So we'll have six archers, six heavies, and then, and those are mace heavies. And then I'll take two axe, two axemen, or I'll take four axemen. Why not? And that should be our crew. Okay, we got we got the main character as well with us. Here we go. I was so looking forward to this the first time I saw it get teased. 
This looks even cooler than when they first introduced it. Just the fact that we can choose our own squad. Hell yeah. We're coming for you. So I'm not sure if we can actually break down those barricades. I'm actually interested in checking. Maybe we could, maybe we couldn't. I don't think I don't think we can just based off of that there. Let's go. This is the perfect death squad. Like I said, though, we got to be super careful. We're on realistic difficulty here. I hope that wasn't one of my actual archers. I feel like it might have been. Yeah, I feel like it. Oh, and they killed them. Oh, yeah, they're dead now. Oh, hello. <laughs> I'm glad that wasn't a headshot. That would have sucked. Might have been the end of my main character's career. Sweet. So we won the battle. We won the settlement. It's ours again. You best believe I'm going to be asking for this one personally. I deserve it back, considering it was mine to begin with. After I took it, of course. But it looks like we got a large amount of prisoners here. I don't think we can hold all those guys. So I'm just going to take the Banner Knights, the Hardened Crossbowmen, and the Vanguards. We'll leave it at that. And maybe these militia. Levi crossbow. Perfect. I'll take this. But for the most part, I don't really need to take anything else. But for the most part, I don't really need to take anything else. Because gear-wise, we're just all kinds of stocked up here. Now, now I'm probably going to show mercy on this one. Because I don't want to have to rebuild all this stuff again. So I'll probably do that instead of pillaging. I know my party might not like it, but oh well. You know what I mean? So save that. Perfect. Let's go ahead and go into the diplomacy menu. Actually, I'm going to double check and make sure my clan leveled up in tier as well. So, okay. We're still a little bit farther out from that, but I'm excited for that too. As far as the kingdom stuff goes... Where do we go for that again? I forgot. Oh yeah, my clan is very influential as far as that goes too. Not as influential as some of the long-standing AI parties, but we're getting there. We're getting there. So I don't know. We'll see if I can get that to switch over to my hands later on, but I'm not too concerned with it right now. I just wanted to make sure that I showcased the system again to you guys and talk a little bit about Bannerlord's changes and how it's been going. I think when it does go into full release, more than likely this year, I'm assuming 2022 to be exact, that it'll be even more fleshed out, but so far I've been loving it. And I've only been playing on the native version, so I haven't installed any mods or tried any of them yet, but there's a lot of them out there. A lot of really cool looking ones too, and if you know anything about Warband, or the original or played them you'll know that mods are where this game really shines but thank you guys so much for watching hope you have a wonderful day that's all i got for now i'll catch you next time